Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this morning. Speak to us through your words, O oh God. We are grateful for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I read from James chapter 1, verse 22 to 24. It's very short, but very critical, critical verse for us. I read from Amplified and other verses, other versions, but prove yourselves doer of the word, actively and continually obeying God's percepts and not merely listens or listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourself by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. Wow. Let me read that in King James. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and do not do not a door, he is like unto a man beholding his na natural face in a glass. For he behold himself and goes his way and straightway forgotten that manner of man he was. NIV, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at the face in a mirror and after looking like someone who looks at the face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like. So the whole book on looking at yourself in the mirror, where is it? This is the book. Um, oh, right here. This is a whole book. It's a whole book on that, on this verse that Kierkegaard uses. And we are trying to turn this into a manual, teaching manual for Sunday school. This is in Korean though. So, but what does that mean? Being the doers and not hearers of the word only. Deluding yourself, deceiving yourself, or corrupting yourself in, in the Greek. The word doers actually in Greek is very interesting Greek. It's poetai, poetai. Poetai, that's where we get the word poet. Uh, poete in Latin, poetai in Greek means to be a poet. poet poete, it means to create. So for a to be a poet, you create something. You are the maker, you are the doer in a sense. So be a poet and be the maker of the word, not hear, hearing only, listening only. Right? Matthew 7, 24, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like wise man who builds his house on the rock. Are you listening to the word of Jesus? Good. Now do what he says. Right? Then you'll be building something on a solid rock. Luke 646. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? I've been telling you to love your neighbor. I've been telling you to forgive people. How come you don't do what I tell you to do, but keep on saying, Lord, Lord? <laughs> Romans 2.13, for it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. Now, this is, why is this important for Jewish people that uh, James is writing to? Because Jews are quite aggressive doers of the law. So for them to listen to this text and said, yeah, same thing. When you follow Jesus, you do what he has told you to do, right? And the whole concept of mirror is uh, introduced here. Of course, 2000 years ago, mirror was just highly polished metal. It was not a glass. So uh, although the, 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 some translation calls it glass, glass wasn't invented 2000 years ago when this was written. So most likely polished metal, right? And it's basically, it is the reflection to see yourself. Um, now, 
this is where Soren Kierkegaard makes, oh, let's, let me just read. The Soren Kierkegaard explains, we learn that scripture is fundamentally practical. We cannot hear it or read it properly unless we have a fundamental concern for how we should go govern our lives, right? So he takes on this James's parable of the mirror and argue that mirror, uh, look at yourself in the mirror, not at the mirror. What, what does he mean? Well, the book uh, by E. Chang also argues that, you know, we have somehow become the expert at mirror, but we're not really appreciate the functionality of mirror. We shouldn't become expert at mirror. You know, what year it is and how mirror is formula. No, it's simply the word of God saying, well, look yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, Steve Evans summarized Kierkegaard's insight. The fundamental purpose of God's word is to give us true self-knowledge. It is real mirror. And when we look at ourselves properly in it, we see ourselves as God wants us to see ourselves. The assumption behind this is that the purpose of God's revelation is for us to become transformed, to become the people of God who wants me to be. And this is impossible until we see ourselves as who we really are. So Kierkegaard offers advice for reading God's word properly. Number one, look at yourself in the mirror, not at the mirror. Do not approach the Bible merely as a scholar examining 30,000 different ways of reading each passage. This makes scripture too so complicated, Kierkegaard says. I very likely never come to see myself reflected in it, okay? Um, so should we ignore the scholarship? Of course not. All the stuff that we're doing is very scholarly, going through Greek. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, how do we really find ourselves? Through the studying of the text. Right, uh, and it's not sense uh, sense of being practical or pragmatic. It's just more becoming existential. Is it real? Two, focus on what you can understand. Kierkegaard says, when you are reading God's word, it is not the obscure passage to, that blinds you, but what you understand, and that you are not com comply at once. If you understand only one single passage in all of the Holy Scripture, well then you must do that first of all, but you do not first have to sit down and ponder the obscure passages. Oh, it's like eating fish. You know, you grill a fish that has full of bones. Well, offer children the section that has no bones. Let them be nourished so that when they grow older, they could chew on the head and the tail of the, the, the fish. So whatever that, that you understand, practice that. Do not debate over difficult parts, obey what you understand, right? That is personal to you. Kierkegaard one warns against using such debate as dodge to avoid personal encounter with what God is saying. What is God saying to you? Uh, David knew that he had not confirmed God's judgment applied to him. Kierkegaard advised us when we read scripture to repeat Nathan's words, you are the one. So Kierkegaard uses this, uh, this text in James and then talk about how King David, he said, who are you talking about? Nathan says, you are the man that wh what I'm telling you about. And so Kierkegaard is saying that every time you read the Bible, well, you are the man. I'm the one that God is talking to, right? And so Kierkegaard, and then uh, this article says, some of Kierkegaard's advice needs to be nuanced and qualified because many of today are not as categorized as Kierkegaard's audience. However, Kierkegaard is surely right to insist that when God does speak, we must be willing to respond promptly and with all our hearts. This is some of the study question. Number one, how do the stands of the biblical scholar and disciple toward reading the Bible coincide? How do their goals differ? Do you agree with Soren Kierkegaard that an educated Christian, we may be tempted to confuse the two stands? Number two, discuss how Evans nuanced Kierkegaard's advice to make it more applicable today. What part of Kierkegaard's advice is most helpful to you? Um, so, um, when Kierkegaard using Book of James, 
by saying that, listen, when you read the word of God, let me actually bring the Bible and show it to you, demonstrate to you. So when you read, when you read the word of the Lord, then what you need to do is look at the mirror word of God and see yourself who you are and become the poet of the words, the doers of the word, not simply debater, talking about it, disagreeing, agreeing, arguing about the word of the Lord. Yes. So I just pray that as I read this once again, meditate, reflect, and say, and make a decision. Yes, Lord, I'm going to be the doers of the word of the Lord today. Amen. This is James chapter 1, 22 through 24. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what he says is like someone who looks at his face in mirror and after looking at himself goes away, immediately forget what he looks like. Wow. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> so Father God, I just pray that we'll truly read and look at the word and truly be the doers, become one who's obedient to your words, Lord, not simply listener, the hearers of the words, for death cannot save us. God, I pray that we could become the doers of the word so that we could be saved. Lord, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.